series of Strange But True. We'll be offering you tales of the mysterious, the extraordinary and the paranormal and putting them to the test. Nearly all of us seem to have had such experiences or know someone who has. A sighting of mysterious lights in the sky, an encounter with a ghostly apparition or perhaps a vivid premonition. The sceptics naturally claim we're still waiting for definitive proof that any of these phenomena actually exist. But if a paranormal event was to be caught on camera, would that be enough to provide conclusive evidence? And in over a hundred years of photography, surely by now there must be such an image. Just before Christmas 1996, over 800,000 people flocked from all over the world to gather outside an office block in Clearwater, Florida. What they saw caused many of them to faint, become hysterical, or claim to have had life-changing experiences. They lit candles and left gifts and donations of over 20,000 pounds outside the building. Their pilgrimage had been inspired by this image on the glass-fronted structure. To some, it was a simple trick of refracted light, but to others, it was the manifestation of the Virgin Mary herself. A case of believing what you see or seeing what you want to believe. Dr. Roger Green is an expert witness in assessing photos and video images. I think the, the explanation is relatively simple. Um, if we drop uh, some oil on some water, we get what's known as a colour fringing effect. It's due to the way the light falls on the surface and is diffused and reflected from that surface. It's a classical scientific phenomenon. The Freeman's Guild dinner at Coventry's 14th century Guild Hall. A pleasant enough scene, but on closer examination, there appears to be a rather sinister guest saying grace at the top table. No one recalls seeing the hooded figure on the night. I don't think it's a hoax. Certain things about the image which are strange, and I think it's a curious coincidence of events whereby a one person standing here is in front of another person in white, who could be uh, a waitress or it could be the ghost of a knight in armour. It's all a matter of interpretation, and this is, in a sense, the uh, mystery of the picture. This picture was taken by a vicar. Would a man of the cloth be so mischievous as to invent a ghostly presence in his own church? I find it an interesting figure, not least of which is uh, certain inconsistencies about it as far as what might be called common sense is concerned. But optically, if we look at the figure here, we can see, if we look very carefully, there are in fact what seem to be specular reflections from a pair of glasses. And if we use image processing techniques even more, we can actually home in and see what appears to be an eye behind the piece of cloth. In addition, I find it rather strange that the monk figure has decided to cover his head with a piece of cloth anyway. So the whole thing is just generally rather implausible. Video is not so easy to tamper with. This footage was shot by a bird watcher in Yorkshire. It was only when he watched the video at home that he noticed two spectral figures in the background. Well, I have to say it gave him the creeps because I was quite uh, surprised to see some what appeared to be figures within the, the field of view. Where the figures appear to be is actually a quite a dangerous area. It's a, an old sewerage uh, bed about 30 feet deep in unmentionable material. And these figures appear to be standing right on the spot. It's almost an impossible situation physically because I've been to the site, taken photographs, and it's not possible to stand in any way where those figures have appeared. Any explanation of the picture remains unforthcoming. More recently, the phenomenon of crop circles has provided a new mystery. Could video evidence be used to prove that paranormal forces are at work when they are created? Just a few hundred yards from a crop circle, what appears to be a silver object hovers over some fields. Some claim it's connected. Well, to me, it doesn't look like any kind of UFO. In fact, it looks more like a bird. It could well be a seabird because it's moving erratically and it's got perhaps glossy wings which reflect the light in a manner not unlike uh, a metallic object. In this video, the moving white objects are seen by some to be UFOs in the process of creating designs in a cornfield. For 34 years, Peter Southurst was a technical expert at Kodak, where he examined hundreds of so-called paranormal images. That was one of the most bizarre um, pieces of film that I've ever seen. It's unusual to actually see a crop circle uh, being, actually being produced. I don't think I've ever seen one uh, or heard of one being produced before. We're seeing some kind of um, electrical uh, device hovering around the field and then suddenly the crop circles appeared. 
One problem is that the identity of the person who took the video is a mystery. But what if footage is supplied by a reputable source like NASA from a space shuttle camera pointing at the Earth? Nick Pope was guardian of the real-life X-Files on UFOs at the Ministry of Defense. This is a fascinating piece of footage. Uh, what we're looking at here is three objects which are apparently rendezvousing with each other. This is interesting because the astronauts are, are zooming in on this. So if this was just something natural and mundane, why the interest being expressed? The three objects which form a sort of triangle uh, look to me to be some form of specular reflection. And as the camera zooms in effect on them, they change their configuration because of the change of the optical path. So they're most likely internal in some way to the system. This is a famous photograph taken uh, from an aircraft over Costa Rica in 1971. Again, it appears to show a, a disc-shaped craft. It certainly seems to be pretty big, but it was only in the picture for about one frame, which means that it was going very, very fast. I was an aerial photographer at one time, and one of the things that can happen uh, when you're taking photographs from the air is that you get things dropping off. So I think we're looking there at something which has fallen from the aircraft, is still within a few feet of the aircraft, and has been imaged by the camera as it's gone down. There are thousands of images which are alleged to feature visitors from outer space. Some could simply be saucepan lids, reflections, or even a well-placed button. Others wouldn't be out of place in an old B-movie. Well, I think quite a lot of them are hoaxes. In the case of this particular one, uh, we have to look very carefully at the lighting in the scene. If we look at the grass on the ground near to the camera, we can in fact see a shadow from this so-called UFO, which is appropriate to a small object near the camera and not a large object further away. In addition, the antenna on the top of the UFO appears to be of the wrong kind for long-distance radio communication. <laughs> As an engineer, I find that uh, rather strange for a high-tech machine. 90% of these unidentified images on film can be dismissed as different types of aircraft or natural phenomena. But is some footage worth more detailed inspection? Since 1991, Mexico has been home to hundreds of sightings like this one. And this one, seen on the same day as the total eclipse of the sun. I think we were looking at um, something which was a weather balloon, which comes down, changes shape, revolves and, and there's a whole variety of uh, contortions as it uh, comes down to, down to Earth. This doesn't look like a weather balloon to me. Weather balloons uh, fly fairly steadily up through the atmosphere and then drift on the wind and then come down to Earth. This, this appears to be hovering. It's no weather balloon. Here we've got a truly remarkable piece of film footage. Uh, clearly shows a structured craft uh, moving slowly across the screen. Uh, with apparently a, a flashing light on the underside. Now, some of the skeptics might say, well, this is uh, an airship. But the flight paths of these airships are well known. As it happens, no airships were confirmed to have been airborne at the time. Earlier this year, there were reports of the most stunning UFO video ever seen. It was apparently enough to convince an insurance company to pay out a million pounds to a man called Joe Carpenter, who claimed he'd been abducted by aliens. But there was something about his story that seemed just too good to be true. I went to Swindon, Wiltshire, with a couple of my friends. We have a small UFO group called Majestic. We got spare batteries. We are armed to the teeth with all manner of high-tech gear, camcorders, binoculars in order to do a sky search to see if we can find or observe any uh, strange phenomena in the sky. But for two hours, nothing happened. Suddenly, the torches flickered. Oh, great. We can't be the batteries, they're new. Joe, where are you going? I felt this, this weird force pulling at me. I saw this bluey glow, triangular object. All of a sudden I was hit with an intense beam of light and I was lifted off the ground. I then awoke. I was in an extremely surreal place 
The only way I could describe it was um, a dome-like structure. And I saw a shadowy figure who looked like dolphin shapes. My camcorder was still running, uh, and the next thing I remember is that I was once again falling to the ground. Joe! Joe! Oh. I've recorded it. We have a claim, and there's an 80% likelihood that we will be paying that claim. That was our simple object. The man in the audience was Simon Burgess, managing director of insurance company Grip, who'd covered Joe against alien abduction. He claimed the video evidence had convinced him to pay out one million pounds. As the story hit the headlines, Joe was flown all over Europe to give his account. Eventually things got way out of control. I had phone calls from France, Germany, all over Europe, Canada, Australia, America. The whole world and his brother wanted to interview Joseph Carpenter. Now, I couldn't handle this. Friends, family, people from off the street were asking for money. Eventually, uh, I thought I have to tell the truth. This is uh, too much for me. Joe finally admitted the whole story was a hoax. Joe Carpenter is in fact Joe Tagliarini, a family man from Enfield. His real video archives consist of nothing more unusual than sightings of his son, Luke. I created the alien uh, abduction insurance certificate basically as a, as a novel thing. Um, I had a, a friend in the insurance industry. I did uh, persuade him that it, it would be in his interest and mine to participate in the hoax of claiming to have paid out a successful claim of uh, one million pounds. My main objective was to see if uh, people really did believe, and they did. Joe still goes on regular sky watches with his friends and he's promised to let us know if he has a real close encounter. So I think next time we'll need a little more than his word on it. It's well known that twins have a special rapport. But what if the link between them goes further than that? In part two, we look at twin sisters who can actually feel...